Welcome y'all to another episode of our Shenzhen IO Let's Play. It'll be episode four. So if you remember last time we just finished with the wire with the infrared sensor. And there was an update to the game, the 1.1 update, and it looks like they changed out one of the puzzles. Because this last one was a different thing. However, we're going to do the virtual reality buzzer first, so let's go take a look at that. So basically, the dude wants a little doorbell on his office for his girlfriend to be able to hit a button to buzz him. All right, so let's go take a look. So it also looks like this will be our first intro into some of the wireless communication methods in, in this game. Can we have one where we sent stuff? So simple receiver, receive and transmit. So RX is a non-blocking input. So anytime we actually try to read from it, it will give us data, regardless of whether the data has changed or anything like that. Buzzer is simple output. So P0, P, so it's a yeah, P0, P1 output. So yeah, very straightforward there. Oh, and we have, as part of the update, they soft locked parts. So instead of keeping us from being able to use these other kind of parts, they basically just say you shouldn't need it instead. That looks pretty simple. So this should just be a straight pass through. The question is, can we do this in 10 lines or less? Let's try it this way. I'm just going to grab the bigger one. And if we fit, we fit. If we, if we can do it smaller, then we'll replace it with the smaller one later. Because I like straight lines, I'm going to line up my P1 output here. Move this down so the RX lines up here and we can just go whoop. Oh, didn't let me do it, but we can do that. No other reason, really. Except that I like the straight line. I mean, I guess if I wanted to get really fancy, I could do this and then go a boop. And we have it nice and tight. I think that just feels a little too cramped, so I'm going to just have it over here. All right, looks like we have negative 99 and then we will get a one or yeah, so it looks like we'll get a one when we start and a zero when we finish. So let's start with a simple test and reset logic of waiting for this to happen. So sleep. We check to see if X0 is negative 99, 999. If it is, we just sleep one. And then we jump back to sleep. Okay, easy peasy. If it is not. Okay, so reset logic is done. Now we need to actually do something useful. So looking at our input, it looks like anytime we get a one, we should start doing stuff, and then if we get a zero, we should stop doing stuff. So we need to see if we are zero. It always looks like we transition to a one from negative 999. We can try to be cheeky and just assume that we're going to do that, and so then it'll simplify the logic because then we don't need to do two checks. We just need to do the one to see if we're equal to zero, which means we need to then start doing our reset logic. I'm going to say let's test if we're equal to zero and then reset if we are. So let's try that real quick. So we're going to call this buzz because we should start buzzing when we hit here and we're going to see if we're equal to zero. Okay, so we have that check. And then when we are equal to zero, we're going to do our reset logic. So we want to make sure we reset our outputs to zero. And then we're going to want to jump back to our reset, our sleep logic. So now while we're active and doing something, it looks like on the very first cycle, we want to actually send 100 to the accumulator. So since we start with zero, let's not it, which will make it 100. If it's if the accumulator is zero, it'll make it 100. If the accumulator is 100, it'll make it zero. Then we'll move the accumulator to P1, our output. Then we can sleep one, and then we can jump back to buzz. So let's give that a shot. Oop, we forgot something. We forgot to reset our accumulator. So now with that, this should be good. Let's speed it up. 
Looks like this one was pretty easy. And hey, power usage wasn't that great. Production cost was on par. I'm curious how people were able to do it cheaper. I think some people figured out a fancy way to get it done in the smaller chip would be my guess. Let's go take a look and see if we could have fit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If we could shrink down two of these lines, we could do it. Eh, I think that'll be an exercise for later. I'm not really seeing any easy way to simplify this. Continue on then, shall we? Oh, and we got our device 2A27 back. Prototyping new ideas. This was basically just go have fun and make a game. I made some, I made the dumbest thing ever. Or basically it runs. So the whole point was just to hit the button when it reaches 50. Or if you're smart, you just hold the button and let it run. This just goes counts up and down. And then whenever this gets a signal, it's, it's at 50 when the button is pressed, it increments a counter. It's a game. Don't judge me. I figure once we have more components, then I'll do better, which I guess we do now. Huh. We actually do have access to a lot more components. I'll try to figure out something later and come up with something better than this. But in the meantime, that's this done. So let's hold this. I at least have video evidence that I did this. So yes, I promise I did this. <laughs> nice little inside joke. Self-referential joke, at least. But let's move on to the next one. A little help. So you want us to make a wireless game controller. Okay. Sounds pretty simple. Let's see what we got. Like a fairly straightforward board. Okay. So everything's a simple input, which means we're going to need at least two microcontrollers. RX is non-blocking again, and this time we actually have to send stuff to the output. This is just like the virtual reality buzzer, except we're sending back multiple data packets. The interesting thing is, can we just shove all those out at once, or is it going to expect us to buffer those at all? And there's some kind of fun going on with the buttons. It looks fairly simple. I think we can get away with just doing a A equals 1 and B equals 2, and then just adding them if they're 100 and going on. Okay, so this looks very similar to what we saw in the last puzzle, except I don't see any kind of zero that's telling us to turn off. I think we can get away with just two microcontrollers and we don't need a third. So let's slap down a big one. And we have to use a big one because of the number of inputs. So what I'm thinking is let's let's have the have a small microcontroller handle the two buttons. And then we can have the other microcontroller handle the XY inputs as well as getting the data from the other microcontroller for the buttons and sending and receiving of data. So let's take this guy, move him down here. Let's do there. Try to minimize trace length, make it look pretty. And then, like I was saying, we're going to want this guy over here. See, he's going to be on an X. So yeah, let's just line those up like that. And gonna want that so now we can either go under or let's just to make it easier for y'all to see this Ooh. okay so let's just do this here this and then let's go take this one since it actually looks like it can rotate hey there we go and do that I'd really like to compress that down a bit more since we have so much more room. But whatever. Okay, so let's start with this guy. Actually, let's check a few things with some, some questions. It said it's non-blocking receiver. 
So then I'm assuming we can't get away with something like this. X0 and X1. X0. Let's just say sleep one for now so that it doesn't complain. And we never go anywhere. Or this part is not sleeping because this is a non-blocking read, so it always gets the data. Okay. So then we're going to want to do something like we did in the last one. We'll call it sleep. And as long as x0 is equal to 9999. Oh, yeah. So let's do something simple and just say, like in the last one, and say sleep while. while x0 is equal to negative 999. Sleep one. And we'll jump back to sleep. Okay, so our sleep part is done. And then according to this over here, we send out the X, the Y, and then the buttons. Our X is on P0, our Y is on P1, and then the other chip's on X2. Let's go deal with the other chip first. So over here, since we want to try to reduce our power usage, let's start with this one sleeping on X0. So we need to actually take the data off that pin, otherwise the big chip will be blocked sitting there waiting for something to read that's not going to read. So let's just take that and move that to P1. Because one of the things is that we can't read from a pin we wrote to. So while it says it's a simple I.O., I kind of like an analog pin or output, it's kind of sort of not really because they don't want you to cheese it by using those pins as extra, basically an extra register. So putting it there will basically just make it go away and we don't have to worry about it. So I guess we could have thrown it in the accumulator and then just reset the accumulator on top of it. Either way. Okay, so now we want to check A. If A is 100, P0, then we want to add one to the accumulator. Do we want to check our B to see if it's 100? Add two. And we need to write this out to the X0. So how does this work? Well, if you remember, basically, here's our flow chart of if A equals 100, B equals 1, 0. So if they're both 0, 0. If A is pressed and B is not, we send out a 1. If A is not pressed and B is pressed, we send out a 2. If A and B are both pressed, we send out a 3. So basically, that means we can add a 2 anytime B is pressed. Or we can and we can add a one anytime a is pressed this is basically like doing binary bits because that's the exact same thing you would do here except we don't have any bitwise operators so we so it's easier to just add the actual numbers than try to do any bitwise fanciness okay so that guy should be good so let's come back over here and now we need to handle writing up to the transmitter So when we come in here, we just need to say read in X or read out, write out, read, write, either way. So there's our two packets. And we're going to assume that it wants all this at the same time. Okay, so here we're telling, we're sending out a quick write here so that the sleep will work. We send out a quick write, or we send out a quick data packet on the X bus so that that other chip will wake up and do its thing. And then we're going to want to read that back in and write that back out over to the transmitter. OK, so let's see what happened now, if this works. Or if we made some silly mistake. OK, apparently it did want all of those at once. We're just going to sit here in our sleep. Yep, that looks good. So let's hit the button and watch it go. If we missed any cases, it doesn't look like it. Pretty simple and straightforward.
could have done that cheaper. I'm not sure how we could have gotten cheaper on the power there. And we were pretty tight on lines on the small chip. This is probably a good place to stop, and then we can do the next two next time. So, with that, if you like, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any questions, suggestions, feedback, or advice, drop it in the box below. Good luck in your races, and y'all take it easy.